Thank you for joining us for the City of Phoenix 17th Annual 9-11 Memorial to remember those individuals lost on September 11, 2001. Individuals lost at the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, United Airlines Flight 175, American Airlines Flight 11, American Airlines Flight 77, and United Airlines Flight 93. Also on this day, let us also remember those hundreds of survivors and responders who we continue to lose from 9-11 related exposures and illnesses. Please stand for a moment of silence. Thank you. At this time, please remain standing for the invocation by Phoenix Police Chaplain Robert Fesmeyer. And please remain standing for the national anthem being sung by Phoenix Police Sergeant Vince Lewis, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. You're welcome to join me in prayer. Almighty God of mercy and peace, we seek and invite your presence, your comfort, and your care as we remember all the lives taken on September 11, 2001, and the lives lost since that day because of the evil inflicted upon us all. We gather to honor all the lives laid down as our protectors rushed into the danger, the smoke, and the fire to save people that they had never met and who would never know their saviors. We will not forget their sacrifice or courage, nor do we ever take this for granted. It is a sacred and precious gift that was not given in vain. We ask your comfort on the survivors, those living with the horrific images and sounds, those who live with only the memory of friends and co-workers now absent from their lives. We will not forget their suffering, and they do not suffer alone. We ask your healing presence fill the empty seat at the dinner table, the place in a family photo, the arms aching to hold loved ones lost, and the hole left in the hearts of parents and siblings, spouses, and children. Only the presence of the loving God who created us can fill the void left until we see them again. God of comfort, may we find our strength in you as we honor our fallen, acknowledging our efforts as only a temporary substitute to the welcome you gave our heroes as they entered eternal life. We ask your blessing as we obey your sacred word to show respect to those whom respect is due and honor to whom honor is due. In your compassionate presence, we pray. Amen.
Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Present Hall. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order! Hall. I'd like to acknowledge several city officials who are joining us today. Please hold your applause until I've read all of the names. Vice Mayor Jim Waring, Councilwoman Deborah Stark, Councilwoman Laura Pastor, Councilwoman Vanya Guevara, Councilman Michael Nowakowski, Councilwoman Felicita Mendoza, Phoenix Fire Chief Kara Kalkbrenner, Phoenix Police Chief Jerry Williams, Assistant City Manager Milton Dehoney. Let's also welcome some very special guests, our local retirees from the New York Fire Department and New York Area Police Departments. The Assistant General Manager for United Airlines, Brian Giesler, United Airlines Supervisor, Brian DeRosa. I would like to bring your attention to a few items that are a part of this ceremony this morning. Behind the audience and just to my left is a special 9-11 tribute, an educational display. This includes a piece of metal from the collapsed World Trade Center that was gifted to the Phoenix Fire Honor Guard. Please stop by and take a look at these items before you leave. In addition, the bell that you see up front here is loaned to us each year from the Hall of Flame Fire Service Museum here in Phoenix. Our first speaker today will be Chairman of the Public Safety and Veterans Subcommittee, Councilman Michael Nowakowski. At this time, I'd like my colleagues to please stand right. On behalf of our Mayor, Thelda Williams, my colleagues, the Vice Mayor, Jim Waring, Council Member, Deborah Starks, Councilmember Banya, Councilmember Felicita Mendoza. We like to remember those 2,977 lives that were taken September 9th, 11th, 2001. As you, there's certain things that stay ingrained in your lives where you were when the first time man stepped on the moon, where you were when John F. Kennedy was shot. And for my generation, it'll be the terrorist act of 9-11. My wife and I were expecting our first child. My wife, Dele, was pregnant of six months. And as we watched the television and the news, that morning, we wondered what kind of a world are we bringing our firstborn to? Where there be war? Will there be a terrorist act here in Phoenix? What kind of a world would Michael Ray be brought into? And as we watched the television over and over and over and over and over again, you kept on seeing the airplanes crashing into our Pentagon, into the Twin Towers. And we wondered what's gonna happen to this great country of ours. And then we heard the testimonies of the loved ones looking for their husbands and wives and daughters and sons. And then weeks went on and we started to see the best of our country. We started to see our men and women in uniform going to New York with all kinds of resources to try to dig those individuals out of the Twin Towers. We started to see our churches filled with people praying for this great country of ours and all the victims. And then we started to see our children walking door to door, knocking on neighbors' doors, asking for their change, and collecting millions and millions of dollars throughout this great country of ours. Artists putting on concerts to raise resources. And that's the type of country that my son was brought into, a country 
that loves one another. During 9-11, everybody was colorblind. It didn't matter if you were African American, if you were Anglo, if you were Hispanic, if you were Native American, Asian. We all were Americans sticking together to figure it out. And we're here today to pray for those families of those victims. And also we're here today to thank you men and women in uniform that protects and serves our community on a daily basis, that runs into those buildings that are on fire, that runs towards those bullets that are being shot at people. We want to thank you for putting your lives on the line for us and for our families. On behalf of our mayor and all my colleagues here, we want to thank you. We also pray for those families that have lost their loved ones back in 2001. And we also pray for this great country of ours. Thank you. And with that, I'd like to introduce our chief, our police chief, Jerry Williams. Thank you to Chairman Noah Kowski and all of our members of council for supporting us. Good morning and thank you for attending today's memorial ceremony, honoring the memories of the first responders and innocent civilians who lost their lives in one of the darkest days in our country's history. It is hard to believe that 17 years has passed since that faithful day and most of us were old enough to remember what we were doing at the time that the planes hit at the time that things were happening. In a matter of minutes, September 11, 2001, became one of those rare momentous days in our history that now marks the deadliest act of terrorism carried out on American soil. An estimated 3,000 lives were lost in those attacks, and of that total, more than 400 of those were folks like me and Fire Chief Cockbrenner and the men and women you see standing in uniform, our first responders. Reflecting back, many images of that day come to mind. One that has been immortalized in the minds of many were the scores of first responders who ran towards unimaginable danger, many of whom sacrificed their lives while attempting to save others. In law enforcement, that event alone was responsible for more line of duty deaths than any other single event in our nation's history. But the tragic loss of life did not end that day. After all these years, hundreds of additional first responders and civilians many of whom were involved in the search and rescue recovery at Ground Zero, have died due to illnesses they contracted from toxic conditions, and that fate may await untold others. Recent reports suggest that by the end of this year, more people will have died in 9-11 related illnesses than were killed on that tragic day. Those persons who gave their lives while trying to save others left an enduring legacy of selflessness and service that reflects on all law enforcement and public safety today. That is why it is so critically important that we never forget those sacrifices. And after all these years, our thoughts and prayers remain with the family of those who perished that day and with the survivors who carry the painful memories on that day. So on behalf of the men and women of the Phoenix Police Department and the City of Phoenix, thank you so much for joining us today to remember and honoring those heroes. Next up, I'd like to bring up my peer and friend, Fire Chief Kara Cockman. Good morning. 17 years ago today, our world changed. A series of terrorist attacks on our nation on September 11, 2001, left us stunned and permanently altered our collective sense of security. Nearly 3,000 people were killed and some 6,000 others were injured as airplanes were used as devices to kill and harm innocent civilians. The Fire and Emergency Medical Service lost 343 of our brothers and sisters in the collapse of the World Trade Centers. And the toll continues. As Chief Williams mentioned and Chief Bigler, is that this, the study by the Fire Department in New York has found that thousands of other people have contracted illnesses through exposures during that fateful day. Nearly 10,000 people have subsequently died, 110 of those are firefighters, and the toll will continue to rise as the day goes on. The after effects of this horrific event do not end on that fateful day. 
What I ask of you this morning is that you have the empathy for those who are still suffering in their families as they continue to face the aftermath of the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Emergency responders are world-renowned for their bravery and empathy. We truly care. Firefighters and police officers seek their professions because of the love to serve the public. We willingly risk our lives for the public each day that we serve. This date in history serves as a stark reminder of that fact. Here in the city of Phoenix and surrounding communities, law enforcement and firefighters are very fortunate to have a very solid working relationships and response capability. We are committed to protecting our community together and keeping our citizens safe. We do witness tragedy, but we embrace the responsibility in order to protect the residents of Phoenix. Today, we remember all the souls on that lost, on that difficult day in history. And we honor our fellow firefighters who rushed in to help, never to return home. This morning, your Phoenix, police fire, your Phoenix firefighters and Phoenix police officers stand proud before you, united in strength, purpose, and honored to serve this great community. On behalf of the men and women of the Phoenix Fire Department, I thank you for joining us to honor these heroes. And in closing, I'd like to mention 44 of Phoenix Finest Police and Firefighters left this morning, early morning, to respond to Raleigh, North Carolina, in order to pre-position pre for the incoming Hurricane Florence that will hit the coast sometime Thursday or Friday. S several of these people that are on this trip today were also at 9-11. So it's a standard that these folks continue to honor our public, not just in the city of Phoenix, but worldwide. So keep them in your thoughts and prayers as this hor horrific hurricane will continue to move towards the coast. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. It is now my pleasure to read to you our adapted fire service bell ceremony, followed by the traditional playing of taps. In the fire service, we are steeped in traditions, some more than 400 years old. One such tradition is the sounding of the bell. It was the bell that signaled the start of duty, and through the days and nights, each request for help was sounded by a bell. For a firefighter, when the fire was out or when the call was done, it was the bell that brought them home and back to quarters and signaled the end of the call. When a firefighter died in the line of duty, giving his or her life for others, it was the mournful toll of the bell that solemnly announced the passing of a fallen brother or sister. Today, we again use this tradition to help describe our feelings, our passion, our sorrow, and our respect for all of the responders, either by profession or by action on September 11, 2001. For our fallen brothers and sisters of 9-11-2001, we give you the sounding of the bell, the unique FDNY signal called five of four, or five rings. Four times representing the end of your earthly duties that day and since, and that we called you home to quarters one last time.
Bagpipes are an honored feature during a ceremony to remember a fallen police officer, firefighter, or other public servant. And the most significant song to be played is Amazing Grace. Please welcome Phoenix Fire Chaplain Daniel Richards, who will now give the benediction. Here, 17 years later, I come in the stead of Father Carl Carlosi, the deceased Phoenix Fire Chaplain, mentor, colleague, and friend who went with our five firefighters in response to the call so many years ago. We come fewer every year as the first responders who were there, who remember. As some are no longer with us and younger citizens take their place in the ranks of the willing. In the struggle epitomized by 9-11, not a struggle for vengeance, for that truly belongs to the Lord, or the bleeding sword of wrath, but for the soul of our world our nation, our souls as Americans. Of every creed and no creed, we seek to stand for something that neither the terrorist nor the despot truly understands. We seek to stand as something better, a city on a hill, an image of the good nation that believes in the dignity of every human life and the freedom to let that dignity flower in freedom into responsibility into the stewardship of the good and noble cause of protecting, serving, ensuring that shared freedom for others. We remember and mark this moment to grieve the loss of human lives, taken and given. And we rejoice in a nation that values each and every life as precious, dignified, and ours. So please join me in prayer for those who are willing to answer the call, for those who rushed in to get others out, for those who sheltered, bandaged, carried, searched, and honored, for those who fled in terror or watched a world away, for those who stood over us in vigilant and tense watchfulness so that we could and can sleep in safety over the days and nights weeks and years hence, for those who sought out the evil responsible abroad and for those who grieved and wept alone, for those who are still fighting for the soul of this nation, for our highest ideals, our hopes, and that crazy dream that we can be a people blessed and worthy of the bloodshed, the lives lost, 
the cost paid. O holy God, we come to remember and to grieve and to ask your blessing. To remember those who lost their lives on September 11, 2001, and those who gave their lives that day for others and in the years since, in faithful service to the cause of the battle for the soul of our nation and our world. We come to grieve the fallen, to thank those who carry the wounds of that battle, the damage done to us and by us in pursuit of the vision you have entrusted to this nation among the nations of the world, to be a place that seeks with all our failings to protect the dignity of every one of your children, to ensure liberty and freedom for every citizen, and to steward your people, your land, your world, to the honor and glory of your name. We ask your blessing, O Lord, on those we remember, on we who carry on, and on our leaders, our first responders, our vigilant protectors, our proud, our free Americans. Bless the world you have given us, and bless us to continue the work set before us of remembrance and stewardship and hope. May we be worthy of your blessing as we glorify your name in all the earth. I pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Richards. Our final presentation this morning is a special addition to our ceremony to truly remember what we said for the past 17 years, we will never forget. That means it is incumbent upon us to include and to teach the next generation and the next one what happened and why today is a day of tribute and honor. It is my pleasure to introduce the Arizona School for the Arts Chamber Singers. These 12 students are sophomores, juniors, and singers seniors from the Arizona School for the Arts, located right here in downtown Phoenix, here to perform America the Beautiful.
Thank you. Arizona School for the Arts, Chamber Singers, and to all of you for being here this morning. Let us never forget the sacrifices the men and women of 9-11 made in 2001. I'm going to turn over our final command to Lieutenant Tovar. Please stay safe and Godspeed. Lieutenant.